what should the teacher's role in the classroom be? I think the teacher's role in the classroom is to set the conditions that unleash kids' learning and potential. Um, I think the teacher needs to um, be very nimble in their practice where they can step forward as the expert when it's needed. They can set, um, they set the bar and set it high for all students. And uh, they have the skills to understand how to reach each and every learner, what it takes to um, push, nudge, cajole, whatever it is, um, each and every kid in the classroom mm -hmm. to get them hooked on their learning. How do you feel like a teacher should best um, sort of get to know their kids in order to be able to do that? You know, it's a, it's a commitment to forming um, connections, I would say, with each kid in the classroom. And it um, was kind of an intense focus on it early in the year and a commitment to it throughout the year. Um, and it's just, it's really about building relationships and just like, you know, you do with friendships or um, your family even, you know, your relationships and your knowledge of people changes and evolves over the year, but you just commit to continually asking questions and figuring out what's working and what needs to change and um, how, how you've changed as a teacher and how they've changed as a learner um, and how maybe the context of the class has changed even as a community mm -hmm. and understanding that and how to navigate it. What do you feel like are some of the, the moves that a teacher makes in order to be nimble? You know, like what are they mm -hmm. doing in order to sort of have that nimble mentality? Um, my mom was an elementary teacher and um, she was an amazing teacher and I had the, the um, opportunity to talk to students who had her as a teacher and parents of those students in some cases and I described it this way and I, I think because uh, my mom was one of those people that could do that. I think my mom had an absolute commitment to get every kid to this very high learning standard. Mm -hmm. And she was willing to walk across hot coals to make sure every kid got there. <laughs> metaphorically speaking. Yes, metaphorically speaking. But uh, really, it was that, that sort of, um, we will get there no matter what it takes. And we will try this, and if that doesn't work, we'll try this, and if that doesn't work, we'll try this. And there was just this, um, just this commitment to no matter what it takes, we will walk across this walk to get you to the end. And she still to this day talks about getting this kid to try to read. She was an elementary teacher, and so mm -hmm. reading was the, right, clear. the thing, you know, and she, she talked about this kid who did not want to read and just she would buy books on motorcycles so this kid would read. I mean, just that kind of knowing what, what would make that kid walk to where he needed to walk to in her classroom and she was not gonna give up until she found that thing. And I think it's kind of that commitment to getting to the end and being willing to do whatever it takes to get there is what I see and it's, now, how do you balance that with sort of this element of, you know, what if what's needed is more than I have, right? Like, there's this mm -hmm. aspect of, of how do we ensure that teachers also do not burn out mm -hmm. or do not mm -hmm. sort of uh, try and save uh, the kids right. and, and those kinds of things. And so, how do you how do you kind of balance that with uh, with this ever present commitment that you're mm -hmm. talking about? Mm -hmm. Well, it's not easy. I mean, because it's teachers like my mom do burn out because mm -hmm. of their passion, right? Um, and I think part of it is for all of us to support teachers as much as we can in being able to do that. Um, and for the teachers too to have the responsibility to ask for help when they need it. Mm. Um, and I think it's, when I say support teachers, it's, um, there's a, I've thought of teachers, I can't remember who said this or where I read it or, <laughs> so I can't quote my source on this one, but 
um, historically talking about the role of being like a minister or being a teacher and how the the compensation for those roles was not financial, but the compensation, a huge part of the compensation was how you impacted people's lives mm. and how valued you were by the community or society. Um, and I think um, for a lot of teachers that are great at their profession, a big part of their compensation is the appreciation and the respect for the hard work they do when they and value yeah what and valuing what they do and how hard they work to get kids as far as they get them mm -hmm. those really great teachers it's really great um so i'd love to take an opportunity to to then let you ask mm -hmm. what what is a question that you are really grappling with right now or that you have grappled with for years um, as someone who does a lot of professional learning and, mm -hmm. and works a lot with teachers and leaders? Um, how do we not let our knowledge of what schools are or what learning is get in the way of creating the schools or learning experiences that our kids need? Mm. How do we not let what our understanding is, what schools are, what learning is, get in the way of what kids need. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really great question to sort of always be asking, right? Mm -hmm. Like how does our bias yeah. or how does our yeah. um, set of uh, experiences cloud mm -hmm. or color mm -hmm. um, the things that, that we're asking of others? Mm -hmm. That's really valuable. And, and uh, do, do you feel like that question um, will ever get answered or, or do you feel like it's it's something just to keep on asking yourself? You know, I think we will probably spin in this state of, um, there's a, I don't know if you've ever come across this word, Thomas Kuhn wrote this, um, actually I think he was like a history um, person who got assigned to teach the history of science class as I understand history. And, um, so he took a very, you know, took his understanding of history and explored this topic. And when he looked at how ideas changed in science, he described kind of two um, phases, if you will, that I guess, are, and he calls them periods of normal science, where you kind of have a theory that works and you keep doing research based on that theory. And over time, you gradually get things that don't match up with that theory. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. Oh, well, yeah, the theory works. Oh, well, almost. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Well, except for that. Except for that. And over time, you kind of keep accumulating these things that make you realize your theory is incomplete. And finally, science um, reaches a point where they're like, that's it. We throw it out. we got to start all over. We cannot make that theory explain the vast majority of what we're seeing in the world. Mm -hmm. And then science goes through, he calls it a period of revolutionary science, where it's like, it's, it's kind of a, a tumultuous time because it's like, okay, well, what, you know, what is the new thing? What is our new idea around this? And I kind of think that education is going through that same thing where it's like, well, that sort of works if we do this. Well, let's try this. No, no, well, maybe if we do this. And you keep trying to make all these small adjustments to it. And I think we are about to reach this point where it's like we have to do something completely different. Mm -hmm. And um, and I think until, you know, we keep trying to make the old model work and we're going to reach this point where it's like it just can't. And we have some examples, I think, of, of schools that are doing that. So I think we're starting to get to that point, but I think over the next, I don't know how long it will take, but I think fairly quickly as those new models are are proven and, and people get a chance to see them and mm -hmm. study them, I think we will make that shift. But in the meantime, I think we have to constantly be aware of we're working on this old theory, right? And how do we finally start to say, it's not working. We it's can't no craft on. We all. can't, yeah. yeah, we can't just tweak it. We gotta try something radically different. What's that radically different gonna be? I think that metaphor is incredibly useful and, and, mm -hmm. and I think for a lot of the work yeah. that, that we're doing. So thank you so much mm -hmm. for sharing it. I, re I really appreciate your time. And... All right, that was fun. <laughs> okay.